Welcome back. And uh, while we're on the break, I did a little research and found out it was a uh, artist from uh, from Arecibo in South America that, in fact, did all this research. Uh, his name is Rodney Gomes, an astronomer at the National Observatory in Brazil, and. Uh, he uh, has quite a bit of information. I posted the actual article here from National Geographic News. So this is not like off in La La Land. We're talking about more and more attention by the government. That's why they put up, up these IRAS telescopes, the, uh, the, uh, they call SOFIA, which is the infrared telescope on the top of a Boeing 767 about three years ago. Uh, that's why the, all the other research, including the X-ray telescopes up uh, that are up in space, all looking for this object that can only be seen from an infrared and or X-ray signature. You can't see a regular light signature to identify it. Uh, so, interesting. Uh, John, tell us more about what you're doing. Uh, right, there's a very limited time frame when you can see in the visible light spectrum. As far as my personal preparations, I'm filling in some of the gaps. Um, I am um, uh, having my wife go in the, into town and pick up a quarter ton of salt uh, this coming week. Uh, salt is probably the ideal uh, thing to keep if you're in the middle of the country. Uh, human beings cannot live without salt. It's very cheap to get right now. It, it Freezing won't hurt it. Heat won't hurt it. If it gets moist and, and gets solid, you just bust it up again. Insects won't bother it. Uh, the Romans used to pay their soldiers with salt. Uh, in fact, we still have an expression in daily use. Uh, he's worth his salt. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's one of the ideal things to have. I'm going to be stocking up on a lot of salt. Uh, making sure I got, I, I checked out my water filter supply, picked up another water filter. Uh, just kind of filling in the gaps, Dr. Bill, and, and making sure that all the preps are squared away and, and everything's ready to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, of course, you've gone over that list. I'm going to do another update this weekend on it. Uh, by the way, if you have a chance or any of our team, Ann or John, you can put up uh, video reports on live stream, uh, our live stream channel with some uh, pictures if you want off your screen. Where Anytime you want to grab those and put them up on your own uh, YouTube channel, by all means, do it. Uh, we have our expanding team of, of we call investigative reporters now using our live stream channel to post up reports. Anybody that's been a customer now of Nutramedical in the last six months has access to the live stream channel. And we're going to put up uh, clips from that on our YouTube channel, but it's really important that people realize we're going to do these on the fly. So if any emergent uh, news comes forward on any major issue, it'll be up on live stream uh, very quickly. Of course, also on Nutramedical and on Clay and Iron, depending on which is appropriate. Um, yeah, so, th so this is very real. I think that... Uh, uh, there's a number of other websites that posted up. I like to go back to the original, which is the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the news report right there on original uh, source material. Original source material. When, you, when I pull it up and it's up on National Geographic News, uh, that's much more significant. That's uh, that can that's uh, pretty significant. Well, um, uh, National Geographic is about as mainstream as mainstream can get. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, John, let's talk about everything else that's going on. We have this young man that committed this crime in Aurora. And you're a forensic investigator. Uh, I, I mentioned on the first hour having taken care of the first kid shot in Columbine, worked with the military for years, seen violent crimes on the medical side, worked in emergency and trauma units. I put uh, dollars, to, dollars, to, dollars to donuts, 90% chance that this individual had a previous examples of psychopathy that were identified right, by relatives, right. teachers, and they were most likely on one or more uh, psychotic or antidepressant medications like Celexa, uh, antidepressants, antipsychotics, and that these actually de-repress activity. So we see vets that come back from the Gulf. They're actually a lot of time on, while they're doing operations in Iraq or Afghanistan, on serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And what they do is periodically they cause seizure-like activity of the limbic system, and they de-repress activities that normally their own revulsion would say, no, 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 you don't kill your wife and kids. This is not the right thing to do even if right. you're angry. Right. But the right. drugs well, literally take away that inhibition. The, the built-in uh, mechanisms that we have in our brains to not harm another human being is one of the strongest mechanisms with that there is, and I'm, I know you can verify that, Dr. Bill. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And it's, it's very difficult for the military to overcome that mechanism to get young men to uh, aim a weapon at another human being and squeeze the trigger. It's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, but these powerful psychotic drugs, uh, psychoactive drugs, they, in fact, can do that. They can uh, reduce and, in fact, eliminate these inhibitions. And that, right. uh, that's very likely what's going on here. 
Now, a lot of people think, for example, the work at Tavistock Institute and the work at uh, the Menninger Institute in Topeka, Kansas, uh, at John Hopkins in Baltimore, and at uh, University of California at Stanford, and other facilities such as University of California, Irvine, where they're doing mind control experiments with the U.S. government and DARPA for decades, many decades, that they, quote, didn't succeed. I beg to differ. They've been able to succeed through mind control to split personalities, to create alters, uh, to implant, to use a combination of drugs and pulsed electromagnetic field or other technologies, including research. Even most people aren't aware that, that Timothy Leary working at LSD was actually trying to work with projects to create, if you want to call it Manchurian candidates. Their idea was experimenting with LSD, lysergic acid, diethylamide, uh, and other things such as uh, uh, magic mushrooms or other drugs they were trying to do. They even had a, a drug that uh, was being used as a longer acting form than LSD that would literally last a month and they actually sprayed it over a naval ship and had some major effects back during the Vietnam War. You're probably aware of that project too. Well, I'm aware of many of these projects and, and what they did was absolutely barbaric, uh, illegal, viol violating U.S. law, international law, the, uh, all the things that came out of the Nuremberg trials uh, just absolutely horrific things that these uh, men and women were engaged in for those decades. Yeah, and also uh, any decency, too. So uh, you know, what people need to understand is these things really did happen. They're not like a conspiracy theory. One of the things I find uh, that repeatedly comes up is that people think somehow, whether it's John Moore, Deagle, or Ann, or whatever, we, quote, write ourselves in like, uh, uh, you know, uh, into this history, almost like, you know, they call it the Forrest Gump syndrome. And uh, right. the thing is, Here's, here's how things work. Number one, if you're willing to step forward, God's going to use you. Number two, if you step forward and start asking questions, you're going to find this stuff pretty easy. Uh, you don't need to search for hours. You can go on your computer for two hours if you don't believe anything we say. And you may not get there. It might take you six months or a year or two months. It might take you two weeks. But you're going to eventually be reached the point where if you continue asking questions, your skepticism will dissolve away, right, like, right. like, yeah, it, it, it's like a, a wax finish on a car when you take a hot, uh, you know, torch over it. It's going to melt away. So Absolutely. your skepticism, yeah. Well, people need to exercise their their, their uh, discretion when they're doing these things, and and uh, look for verifiable sources where names are named and places and dates are given, uh, and that, that's what that's the kind of things you look for. You know, I stand behind. My sources. I have to keep them private, or or they would be in in, uh, in harm's way. So I, I have no choice but to keep them private and to keep them confidential. But I'm a yeah. real person. My name and phone number is right there on my website. So right. uh, you can verify it with me. Right now, let's look at the converging timeline here, John, and and, and the preparedness. In fact, maybe worthwhile because we have a little longer show and you'll be here a few more minutes to kind of go over what we are talking about in terms of preparedness. Uh, what people should realize is that. This is a list that's always being in revision, uh, but the, the core things are still there. Uh, for example, right. what people want to know, what have I done? Okay, well, number one, what has Dr. Deagle done? Well, I have food, air, water, you know, I've got everything that's lined up. I have personal protection. I've got a backup power source with a 20 kilowatt generator. We're negotiating with a company out of Colorado that, that provides lithium pyrophosphate batteries, power controllers so you can run solar, wind, or whatever, and so you don't have to run your generator continuously. So last week when our power went out for about four or five hours, we had two seconds when it went out and it kicked back in immediately. Soon with a power control, we can run on batteries, solar, wind. Uh, you have to realize that the power grid is almost the, certainly the first thing that's going to go down in, in a civilization. In fact, I was told this by the FEMA director when I worked in the late 90s with, Dr. with uh, Reserve Admiral John Hughes on Operation Top Off and Dark Winter, the very first thing, and I had access to the classified FEMA response uh, documents, the very first thing that the government's going to do in the case of anything, a biological weapons release, a radiological weapon, a dirty bomb, just medical waste bomb, they're going to shut off the power grid and create a perimeter. That's the very first two things they're going to do, isn't it, John? Oh, yes, absolutely. There, in other words, even if it doesn't shut off because of the CMA, the very first thing the government's going to do, so you can't drive or go anywhere, is they're going to shut off the grid and create a perimeter, perimeter and they're going to do a dual perimeter. The first one will be a ring perimeter around all the major freeways and then a perimeter around the city further out. That's right. People need to be ready. And a lot of time, these external perimeters, many miles out, are all going to be foreign troops manning them, not our regular troops, and they're training them now to be in America if they need them.
Let's go through some of this preparedness list, and then we're going to expand it in a moment here. We're also going to be uh, joined shortly by uh, Robert Felix talking about some of the other things. want to uh, kind of get into the preparedness list here. Uh, firstly, we have uh, Robert, are you there too? I'm sure here. Good, good. Okay, let's right. run through the list here, and we're going to get uh, we'll, we'll be pretty quick because I want to. I'm going to update it, but we call it the 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus list. It started <laughs> up being 10, yeah, and you started this, I think, what some years ago, John. We were on the program. The first thing I tell people to do, and you don't have to listen in front of me, but I'll run through it quickly. Uh, the first thing you need is you need uh, two uh, high quality water filtration systems, and the one that we recommend for portable uh, is the Bev 200 system, which is a tackle box with a 12 uh, volt. Uh, water pump. That's all you need. Cleaner than distilled water, very portable. Uh, secondly, and of course if you have it in your home, you want the BEV 100 or 300. You want uh, one uh, 30 caliber rifle, 500 rounds of ammunition for each individual, or shotgun for closer 150 yards uh, personal defense. Uh, I've also ordered specialty ammo for my shotgun, which includes armor piercing. Uh, uh, you can have the flame throwing ar- uh, shots. You can have balls. You can even have these little balls that have a wire between them. It can literally, you know, these are devastating kind of weapons. Oh, they are. You can, they are. Uh, and there's the flechette rounds that right. have the uh, steel flechettes from Vietnam in them. Right. Well, I have I have all those kind of fancy rounds. So, uh, in other words, don't come pack Don't come uh, to say visiting Doctor Deagle expecting to do violence to me and my family without going to meet your maker. It'll be a bad idea. Uh, then right. you mentioned uh, cast iron pots and skillets. You can buy those from. You've got a couple of recommendations on your website, thelibertyman.com. Uh, a truck. Uh, and we've right. in the past we talked about the Pantone generator. I'm not so convinced that it's easy to get those plans or to figure it out. The most important thing is to get a, a diesel truck or a biodiesel truck that can carry weight. Uh, heavy right. canvas tents. You have on your website the uh, the all-terrain uh, foldable kind of special forces bicycles. Right. Food we have our... Bicycle. Right. Yeah, right we, we, now we have, for example, we have the uh, PrepareWise, and they make the best foods. They're actually in Mylar bags and packets. Uh, we recommend that people get five-gallon uh, the five gallon uh, kind of water jugs, which are the most portable, and they can get those from the ready store. Those are available. You recommend 900 grams of paint uh, of grain per person. I recommend amaranth, spelt, millet, etc. Uh, and you can use dry ice to pack those in your in, in your containers. Let it get Met- that before you seal it up, otherwise you th- your container will explode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then of course heavy liver top boops. You mentioned uh, I like Kabilis is very good. The workshop stores you can go to Amazon. Uh, you want to have also right. over glasses to protect your eyes and eyewear. Uh, vacuum protected uh, heritage seeds and those are great places you can get those uh, around. Those are very important. Um, and a copy of Dare to Prepare by Holly Dale. I also recommend the CERT manual for emergencies for basic life support and trauma. Get involved with your local uh, fire department. The paratrooper bicycles bicycle is at your thelibertyman.com. You have a number of other items that are available. Or tell some of, of the items that are present. Well, on the one of the more handy things is the uh, crank up radio flashlight. It picks up AM, FM, and all the weather bands. You can uh, have it as a flashlight, and you can also to recharge your cell phone. Uh, these things have become very compact and very inexpensive. Right. Uh, very handy thing to have around. Right. Uh, the, um, I offer some publications that are difficult to find, such as the Special Forces Operations Manual and um, a, a survival guide that is one of the best ones I've ever seen, uh, Six Ways In, Twelve Ways Out. Uh, right. done so by, those are all available on your website. That's, right, that's all available really on my website. And, if, and the Faraday bags. These are uh, high-tech bags. They have four layers, including a, a very thin aluminum sheet that protects electronic equipment from EMP attack. That's, that's right. a new item at my website. Oh, that's really good. That's especially important because most people don't realize, even if they're not plugged in or turned on. Dr. Bill, I'll I'll, I'll get some of these in the mail to you uh, probably tomorrow or Monday. That's great. The also the radiation detectors. We now have our new links up to the the less EMF. That's the best place to get your radiation detector. The Inspector EXP and the Inspector Plus. They also have the software. I have the software cables. You can attach it to your laptop and record it. And if you want to record it and actually post it even on a website, 
I recommend our radiation first line of defense kit and our biological weapons first line of defense kit. These are really important to have both. Uh, you should have a greenhouse or the ability to build one. Uh, you can go to Sam's Club, Home Bleeptobe, or if you just get those tubes, we call a tube one with 100 mil poly or deck screws and plywood, but you have to be prepared to, for the fact we could have radioactive rain or air, and you may need to filter your water and protect it from the regular ambient rain without filtering it. I recommend a Generac 20 kilowatt generator. Probably we're going to look at lithium pyrophosphate batteries, a power controller where you can add solar panels. You want to be able to be off the grid. The current uh, power systems are designed basically to be stuck and connected to the grid. 99% of the people that buy solar are connected. Wind generation is okay if you have enough power. Uh, wind, it's very uh, spotty if you're in certain places. You want to have a test done before you put one in, uh, and it should be kind of a backup because you'll, you'll find right, it's good right. to kind of it's, – it's a good backup, and it works at times when everything else is down, like in the middle of the night. Uh, the main right. thing is you got to have batteries that can start to stir up. Well, water, I tell people, get a roof water recovery system. It's law in Australia. I just put one recently up on my roof for – I have a 2,500-gallon uh, uh, tank for my fruit trees and my garden and greenhouse in the front and a 500-gallon for my house and pool. Those will recover off your roof and uh, – uh, very, very good system to have, and then I'm also going to plan on putting in a well. Uh, group defenses, you want to look at the castle defense system. Uh, it's important to also uh, think about uh, KT ordinances in terms of uh, the, some other things you can get for projectiles. You can go online and look for advanced gunshot uh, types of things. I like Quantico. Quantico.com, uh, you can actually, there's a number of stores across the country. Um, uh, personal defense, one of the things after this horror that happened in, us, in Aurora, people that use guns correctly and store them correctly don't hurt or, or harm people. No, they don't. It's a shame there was not uh, a, per, a concealed carry uh, individual in that theater that could have took that guy down. Yeah, if it was a concealed carry person, what would happen is they would, he would have started popping off and they would just simply pull a gun and, and not give him a lethal shot, give him a, maybe a shot with a stun gun, uh, but give him a shot in the leg or arm and then dropped him down and everybody would no, jump him and pin him. I'm sorry to disagree with you, Dr. Billy. Aim, set, or a mass. In Hollywood, yeah. you can hit arms and legs, but in real life... Yeah, I'm talking about if you're right beside mass. Yeah, exactly. Well, All right. Right. I stand corrected, and you're, and you're the you're the expert on this. Uh, solar oven, I think, is a very good idea to have for for cooking. Uh, we also mentioned the not top items for to buy for security. Uh, believe it or not, store at least uh, three weeks of water, which is five gallon jugs, of, uh, which you can get. You want to have enough water so you can have five gallons per person per day. Uh, is there, that's a lot of water. Uh, it is pasta, a lot of water. It adds up quick. Yeah, pasta and ramen noodles, rice, canned soups, meats, veggies, fruit, popcorn, salt, spices, milk, cereal, beef jerky, grains, cooking oil. Very important. We have the coconut oil, coconut pure at uh, our Nutrimeds line, canned nuts, dehydrated foods, and, and freeze dried foods. That's our ready at the uh, uh, preparewise.com. Dried fruits, honey, cane sugar, uh, baking essentials, dehydrated fruit juice powders, almonds, and peanut butter. Salsa, baby food, pet food, and make sure you have enough for your pets uh, for long-term storage. Those are the 25 items that are going to disappear off the shelves quicker than you can imagine, and they're all posted right. there. They'll be gone in minutes. They'll in minutes. In minutes. The, the, those will be gone in minutes if you don't have them prepared. We're going to revise this list because we've done some updates since then. Uh, any other suggestions you can tell people to do? I tell them, get out of the big cities. If you're living in a big city in America or any other country, Live on the periphery in an area where you can get away, if you have to, quickly to your Absolutely. territory site. Dr. Bill, this is the Liberty Man signing off. Thanks a lot again. John is on. You're welcome. Have a great 7 time. to 9 a.m., Monday to Friday, uh, Central Standard Time. His show next Wednesday will be a blockbuster. You don't want to miss it. And we'll come back. We're going to talk to Robert Felix and Ann Morrison. with Ann Morrison and Robert Felix. Robert, tell us about the latest of what's going on with the earthquake, with the earthquakes, volcanoes, and ice, and ice age changes because extreme weather is present. We have drought everywhere. Uh, and then in other places, it's extremely cold, the coldest uh, summer in history in Alaska and in Scotland. Uh, other places are drying right out, and their crops are failing everywhere. In fact, one of the early signs of a transition to an ice age is famine. The crop failure 
hot spots probably caused by the cutting off of the loop current from the Macondo drilling two years ago by British Petroleum at the Gulf of Mexico. And, uh, and of course, volcanism, increased rainfall, is the sine qua non of ice ages. Uh, ice ages are started with increasing volcanism, which is what we're seeing, under oceanic volcanism primarily. Absolutely. We're seeing it all. You know, one of the things that I had to put on my website this week on iceagenow.info, Scotland misses its greenhouse gas reduction targets due to one of the coldest winters on record. I, I just love it. I mean, uh, but, you know, they're, they're not being funny. The, the article, it, it, it talks about the government failing to meet those targets, and, and they're really all of the various ministers, the climate change minister, yep, Oh yeah, man, minister. I like that. that. That's a really yeah. good term because yeah, it is a cult. It is a is a uh, yep. is yep. a cult. Yeah. But anyway, now, they have it, and they say that exceptionally cold weather was to blame, is and, and and that people had to heat their home homes in order to keep warm and safe. And right. Yet they're still wringing their hands that they you know thinking that this. Uh, there's global warming. It's it's unreal. Well, well similar to the uh, the foolishness of chlorofluorocarbons, and I have a report I think I posted last week called "You Can't Float a Brick in Your Pool." The fact is, chlorofluorocarbons are so heavy they cannot float to the upper atmosphere. What can get up there though is hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, which come from volcanoes and from pollution from high sulfur coal burnt in China and elsewhere, as well as under oceanic volcanism that can vent and then literally rise up to the upper atmosphere. Plus the interaction with xenon-133 and radioiodine-131 that can chew up the ozone layer. These are real dangers. Chlorofluorocarbons don't do anything to the upper atmosphere. It's zero. It has no effect whatsoever. The fact is we have people that are pseudoscientists or people that, that they basically are in a position because they have a Ph.D. or a position in academia, but they, they aren't bright. They aren't able to think of multiple things at once, or they throw out one anomaly and they make a model based on things that are incomplete. Uh, the fact is that we know that the glaciers around the world, 80% are increasing, 10% are staying the same or 10 are decreasing. The overall world temperature is not rising in the last decade. Uh, there's a temporary rise in the 90s. That's reversed. What's going on is we are, our hot periods right now, our extreme weather is destroying crops, but the overall world temperature is dropping. Well, uh, when you know, when you talk about the chlorofluorocarbons chloro, being uh, heavier, it reminds me of the the coal mines. You know, 80 years ago, 100 years ago, they kept canaries down there below ground in the coal mines, right? So that they could. I mean, we've all heard of that. So that the, the canary would uh, would die first before the miners did. Right. One of the thing. One of the things that the canaries could check was CO2, because the mines would get uh, inundated with CO2. It turns out that CO2 is heavier than air. Right. So how in the world is that supposed to be up there in the sky creating global warming? It doesn't. It's too it's CO2. Than air. So, sulfur dioxide and carbon hydrogen sulfide are, are lighter, but not CO2. CO2 right. is too heavy. Yeah, yeah. It, but, but in the meantime, you know, we're, well, you also mentioned that, that uh, glaciers are, are growing instead of melting. There's a, a study that just came out this week. It turns out, now this one's crazy. It turns out that only a few hundred of the roughly 200,000 glaciers worldwide have been monitored for a decade or more. Only a few hundred out of 200,000. And, and the scientists have been monitoring the, the ones that are, are at low elevations. Well, now a team of French glaciologists, they've confirmed that the glaciers between northern Pakistan and western China, they're in the Karakoram Range, on average, have not only remained stable, but have even grown yeah. in recent years. Now, now by the way, is, yeah, this is crazy. Is, I mean, they're, they're telling us that the, they told us uh, five years ago that the glaciers in the Himalayas would be gone by 2035. Now we find out that they're growing, and it was based all on guesswork. It was based on inference, and they, they admit it. It's based on inference. It's based on, on interpolation but not based on actual measurement. Now, you mentioned something here in one of the top articles, and I looked at it and said, oh, my gosh. And I, you know, I'm here literally, and my eyes are popping out of my head. It's both this experiment that they're doing live without the uh, cooperation of the po people of the population, I'm sure, where they actually sprayed sun-reflecting chemicals uh, 
sulfate aerosols over New Mexico to see if they can reproduce the effect that volcanoes do in cooling the globe. Uh, this geoengineering is really crazy. It's the same way as people talk about what's in the uh, geoengineering and the, quote, chemtrails. Mm-hmm. The chemtrails are real. They're not imaginary. I took care of pilots flying out of Peterson and Buckley Air Force Base, and because they had classified clearance, I found out exactly what they're doing, and they told me. In fact, I had Dr. Isley, the head of the World Constitution Parliament Association, give me the actual Constitution uh, and Federation documents for the 193 nations that signed the NGO World Federation Agreement, and they planned on geoengineering the oceans with iron sulfates and engineering the upper atmosphere with thorium, strontium, and aluminum nanoparticles, as well as these sulfate aerosols in order to change the, uh, the albedo, the reflectance of the upper atmosphere to, quote, change the atmosphere of the Earth. This is craziness. This yeah, is craziness. Ab- this, this, but, but these crazies, by the way, he was a physicist who ran the, well, the, uh, the vitamin uh, cottages. He, they founded in 1958. These people basically are on a messianic mission. They are incomplete and, uh, uh, scientists that are basically have a uh, narcissistic idea that they know when everybody else is stupid and that they're going to be the preservers of civilization. In fact, they're going to try to crash... Whatever changes are occurring as we transition from one age or aeon to another to an ice age, and the climate shift now, they're going to amplify the problem. In fact, they calculated out that the amount of rainfall decreased by geoengineering the atmosphere would cause a reduction in rainfall over North America up to 20%. Now, already we know what's happening in the Midwest now. The corn crop has dropped. The soybean crop is killed. What's happening is these commodities are going through the ceiling, this kind of policy, by the way, is a form of ecocide. I call murder. Mass murder because even the people in Iran are trying to blame HARP in America on their crash crops. Well, it's partly due to the climate changes we head into an ice age. It's partly due to geoengineering. And it's partly due to the fact we had allowed uh, British Petroleum to drill at the Macondo site and disconnect the loop current. So it's now super hot there and the pacemaker for world climate, according to NOAA and the Frascati Institute and Dr. Zangari, is now gone. We don't have a pacemaker for world climate. So it's all over the map. Hot, cold, dry, Floods one place, so dry the crops are dying. This is what's going on. This is what happens as we head into ice ages. You know, there's a a study by H.H. Lamb. He was probably the world's greatest climatologist. He was out of the United Kingdom, and he was so good. He's the guy that actually founded the uh, CRU unit at uh, at Crute Hadley. he wrote several books on the Little Ice Age, and one of the things he said, just what you're saying, he said that as we entered the last Little Ice Age, there were areas of the world that had the biggest drought in 300 years. Right. Then later that year, same area, same year, they had the, the snowiest winter in 500 years. Right. That is that is one of the marks of going into a little ice age is well, extremes in both directions. Right. We know that the area of the Chilliquit Valley in uh, southern Alaska has the highest snowfall on Earth, and the usual snowfall is over 800 uh, inches per 900 inches per year. Uh, the levels are now hitting new targets. They coldest uh, summer in history in Alaska, the rainiest areas in the British Isles and uh, uh, ever which is why the crops everywhere are failing because of either too much rain, too little rain, and too much heat. And now we've got UV shock to kind of fill us in more of that. We have Ann Morrison talking about what's going on with UV light and with other issues because if you're not prepared, if you don't realize the midday sun is toxic, as they say in the uh, in the, uh, the uh, Transvaal of South Africa, a toxic sun, don't go out. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, yeah, a lot of things are going on here. A lot of times people get overwhelmed. I tell people, get started with simple things. Uh, I'm still in the process of just going back over my lists and updating things and just doing what I have to do. The first thing I tell people, if you're in a big city, get out now. Move out to the outskirts, even if it's four or five miles away, out to a place where at least if you have to go to quote, the country, you're on the edge of the city. Number two, get your, cell, your basics of this list, the 10 plus 10 plus 10 list done, and start doing it now. And just even if the very first thing you do is store water, food, you need to be prepared. To, it's better to be prepared now for anything, just a power outage, uh, a, you know, a 
a national security alert. Maybe the banks are down because they've had a bank holiday. And that could be as simple as five days. Five days without any bank cards, without any being able to purchase gasoline. And remember, the first thing that the government will do in the case of whether it's a biological attack, an avian flu, or a state of war, or just a bank holiday, is they're going to shut off the power grid. Bye-bye power grid. No more power pumping your gasoline to your tanks. No more trucks carrying food to your grocery stores. They're going to shut off the power grid, and your food's going to rot in your refrigerator. And if you have solar panels that are linked to the grid, bye-bye refrigerator, and all your food will melt and rot. Now, you need to be aware that the government wants you to be dependent on them so they can then make sure that you have to come to them for food and water, or if you've got bullets, you'll exchange bullets for bread. Uh, people don't know that. They say, oh, America's armed with so many bullets. The government will say, we'll collect all those when we finally declare a state of emergency. And they don't even need very long. Four to six weeks of basically your food rotting in the first ten hours. And you'll beg to them to give you bread for your bullets. So if you don't have electricity, if you don't have food and water stored, your, your hunkering down plans will be gone. And you, by the way, can only go one tank of gas unless you've got some kind of vehicle or storing fuel. You can go further, like biofuel and with a diesel engine. So you got to think these things through. And, you know, I tell people, you know, live today and enjoy it. Like I'm going to live where I am in Southern California. Take my radiation protection. I'm not freaked out by Fukushima. Do take action. I'm contacting the Senator Wyden and Senator Feinstein's experts. Do file, and we're waiting for, I'm waiting for a final response to get my lecture set up for the Academy this October 3rd to 7th in St. Petersburg, Florida. But whatever you can't do, just live with it. But plan, you know, being a realist. A lot of people, what, what do you say, and when people ask you what they should do? Because a lot of people are going to freak out. They're going to figure, well, I'm just going to get in the truck and just take off. That's not wise, is it? Well, what people tell me is they're going to come over and take what I have. Well, uh, it'll be a bad day for them. Uh, I'm armed to the teeth in a crack shot, and I'm getting more and more weapons all the time, plus I'm developing exotic ones. And At some point, I'm going to let my, my plans for exotic weapons get out, which are far more dangerous than guns. And uh, God help the uh, power that be that wants to take over a citizenry that's armed with these kind of weapons. They're not going to do very well. And we don't want to kill people, but we want to make certain that they know that we are not to be tangled with. We're not Britons uh, or, uh, or Australians or anybody that's going to lay down their guns. Uh, this is going to be a fight to the death. And they need to understand that we're much more clever than they can just bring in predator drones and other things and hit us. We have lots of ways of taking care of business. And we're clever, we're Americans, we're the off-scoffing of the planet, and we have risen up because we were armed to the teeth against the British and the Redcoats, etc., and we're not going to be pushed around. Just not going to happen. So, you know, you were talking about one of the things you could do. But one of the things I recommend that people do is, is read that book one second after. Oh, that's a really good book. Uh, tell us about it, because I, I, I read it, and I can tell you, the decisions that people make months and years before in that one second after disaster, tell us about the summary of it. Well, I don't know if I remember it too well, but I, I, I know that it talks about one second after an EMP attack, and I think the same thing could could uh, apply if, if we had to start fighting in the streets for food uh, as we head into an ice age, but it talks about uh, civilization essentially uh, collapsing. And one of the things you did, hadn't mentioned that I think should be added to your survival list is, is the, uh, your prescription drugs, because after an EMP attack, there's not going to be any electricity anywhere. And let's look Whoa. at your prescription drugs, you know. Is, well, you know what I, I usually tell people, though, before they get uh, worry about prescription drugs, is transition to lifestyle and nutrients. Uh, as yeah. a medical doctor, as an internist, I give recommendations for nutritional and wellness uh, protocols, and I never give drugs. And I used to, 20, 30 years ago, give drugs every day. Uh, when people are saying prescription drugs, I say, Get off the damn things, but it might take you six months to a year of changing your lifestyle, diet, and then getting transitioned to nutraceuticals so you're not taking antidepressants, antihypertensives, diabetic control. And if you do, you have the minimum, and you're able to buy enough then, because remember, nutraceuticals are considerably cheaper than drugs, and you can't get drugs if the whole civilization crashes. Nutraceuticals you can get. You can even grow herbs if you had to. But I tell people, like having an herb garden, you can store nutraceuticals for years. Drugs may not last as long. Um, that's what's well, also important. So well, your uh, drugs, your drugs, the, the the pills are going to be made in one place, 
and the bottles for them are going to be made in another place, and they've yep. got to be trucked back and forth. Well, they're usually the transnational. Going to be running. The, the, the well, believe it or not, going to be running. most of our current meds are made in three places, China, India, and Mexico. The well, powders are moved, sent to America. They're put into capsules. The packaging is maybe made in Connecticut with French and English going uh, to Montreal store or warehouse where it's shipped across Canada, and the English version may be shipped to uh, San Francisco and to uh, you know Colorado and to Chicago. You know, people need to understand that what's going on is a very transnational thing. And so when you say, well, my drugs are made in America, no, they're not. They're probably made in India. They're probably made in Mexico, and then they're compressed into pills or capsules. In, uh, and then the packaging and the printing is made in America, but the rest of it is all done all outside the U.S. country. And if civilization breaks down, transportation breaks down the power grid, Exactly. you're not just not going to get your drugs in two or three months. You're not going to get your drugs in two or three years. That's right. They figure that people who, who need those drugs are going to be dead as soon as their prescription runs out. Well, that's uh, what's happening in Greece, yeah. where they're just the yeah. economic hazards of a country melting down. Uh, people are jumping off bridges because they can't get to afford their drugs. They can't afford to eat. Uh, they're basically destitute in the nations, uh, but don't have any alternative capital to even buy staples. And uh, we've done an act of war against uh, Syria in Iran by basically choking off the supply of food for staples to 80 million Iranians and 25 million Syrians. This is not a smart thing to do. This is an act of war, and we're asking for it, and we're going to be very sorry what's going to come next. And it's not just a one-sided, unilateral, we'll crush you America deal. Uh, the backwash can be very devastating, especially because we've ticked off Russia and China. So what, what do you think, Ann? Well, I just think that uh, he's moving his chemical weapons and his biological weapons so that he can transfer them either yeah. to Iran or to Russia. Yeah. Now, the thing is that the PDD-60, which is a presidential directive 60, was issued by President Clinton and issued over our missile forces not to rely on a launch-on warning that is to prepare for and absorb a nuclear first strike and retaliate afterward. That was never reversed, by the way. And what Obama's done is he's extended that, uh, that, 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 that whole policy and plan uh, we also need to realize what's going on in terms of we're currently move basically an act of terrorism against the uh, the Bashir government. There was a decapitation attempt. It killed his brother-in-law, killed a number of the major war cabinet uh, in Syria. The, it, you know, I can assume in my mind, military kind of strategy in mind, that Syria now has got Ra Iranian and Russian personnel coming in besides uh, logistic support. That the I think so too. The anti-aircraft system is there. Our navy, by the way, that's parked in the Gulf, uh, the the Persian Gulf, is just asking for it. And if they're within 180 miles of any target areas, if the, if the Iranians decide it's important to launch, or the Syrians decide to launch a, a hypersonic cruise missile, our ships won't even see it on radar before it hits them at 18,000 miles an hour. And they need to be aware of the fact that you're sitting duck. Uh, also, the Chinese have EMP weapons that can take out the daisy chains of of chips that run everything from the power generators to the communications to the steering of the ship to the engines. And we released this story uh, three years ago uh, on this program. The fact is military personnel listen to this show, uh, intelligence agencies do, and they ask three things. Number one, who's on Deagle's program? Why are they asking these questions? And how the hell do they know this? And uh, the reason is we are out of the box. We're not under an agency. Nobody's saying, Deagle, don't say that. Okay, I haven't had any visits, by the way, by any government agency, but I guarantee you from my contacts inside government, they are listening. And I hope they are because we're asking questions as good Americans to support America and also to support a stable world. A stable world requires a stable America that's a true republic. Uh, Obama is destroying it. Okay, he's destroying it with his policies and his attitude. And we need to rebuild America to what it was. You need to start off with the family and with you personally getting prepared. Because if we, if this, and be skeptical, if this event coming in, in uh, later in August, September is real, we're going to see major volcanic and earthquake event, events. We may well see a major CME strike the earth somewhere sometime, perhaps in the next 24, 36 months. But... If not, it's a major disinformation op by the government to try to throw off track the so-called alternative media because the regular media is just putting it to sleep. If you're not getting prepared for any disaster, whether it's a superstorm, an earthquake, a power station blackout, whatever, I'm not going to say God help you because he sent his witnesses to tell you already, you better be prepared. Take care. Have a great weekend. And thank you, team. 